here is progress with designing a better HX711 board. Now the first thing you'll notice is there's two extra pins on here. I'll get back to those in a minute. The other thing is I haven't got the ground planes on here yet. I'm going to put one on the top and the bottom. But that will get done when everything's in its final position. First thing, let's talk about the uh, excitation voltage and R1 and R2. Now I've designed this so that there's plenty of space around them. So that if you want to desolder them or knock them off the board, you can uh, do so a little easier. And I've also designed it so that the way the tracks are, it's almost impossible even if you rip the tracks off to damage the tracks which run down to these two resistor positions here for through-hole resistors. I thought that might uh, be a rather good little feature. Um, these can obviously be used for fine-tuning these as well. Um, if you want to put high values in here to get a more precise voltage out here if you want to set it to a precise value. Um, or as I said you can get rid of these and just replace these two with whatever value you choose to so set the excitation voltage. Um, here we have the capacitors on the two inputs and the 100 ohm resistors. Moving on to here we have the rate. So on um, some boards you'll find there'll be a solder jumper on the back so that will ground the rate. Um, or you can use the pull-up resistor if you want the rate to be high. Um, on here, I've added this extra pin so that you can control the rate from the microcontroller. So you can either write high or low, and that will change the rate whilst this thing is actually running. Um, and here we have the other extra pin, which is PWM. Now I've put the capacitor on here. This is the one that removes the DC from the signal. Um, and also I'm going to put little helpful tips like this on here to avoid having to look up the data sheet. That tells you the range, um, frequency range. Um, and that's the position for the crystal. So that can be connected to the XO and XI pins. And then round on the back is when it gets a little bit fancy because I've got loads of solder jumpers. So this is the one for rate. So that's what you'd find on a typical board. You can solder that and then you can ground and get the the rate low. Um, so you slow sample rate. And then we have so this is the X O and X I pens. So setting up either the crystal or the PWM, or you could have the internal clock, which is going to be the default. So I'm going to put a track across here, and so if you wanted to change it from using the internal clock by default, you could cut that track, you could then solder across these two, and then you get the PWM pin would be enabled. enabled. Um, so you could put PWM in from the microcontroller, or you can solder across here and across there, and then that will connect the crystal if you've got it fitted 16 megahertz for example and you can get 116 samples per second also on the back here I've added these pads here so these are the two inputs and the ground so if you have an unused input for example B then you could just solder across all three of those and it would ground the two inputs of channel B not sure if that's a good idea or not. Um, it might act as an aerial, this extra copper, and cause more noise, but I thought it might be quite a useful feature, possibly. I'm just trying to add every feature I can possibly think of to this board. And uh, yeah, if you have any comments, um, improvements, or mistakes you spotted, then put them in the comments. That would be great. Otherwise, um, I think that's all that to be said about it for the moment and thank you for watching.